Hello everybody and welcome to the first round of the winner's bracket in the Masters of Arabia 2v2 tournament. We are going to have Spaden and Lufus, the two Swedish players, face off against Tato and Error. So first let's introduce the players. We are going to be playing on Arabia by the way, of course, Masters of Arabia tournament. Starting in the top right corner we're going to have Tato in red playing as the Byzantines. His teammate for this game is going to be Error playing in blue as the Mongols, so Byzantines and Mongols for their team. In the bottom left side, we have Spaden playing as the Franks. And in the top left playing in the lovely teal color, we have Lufus playing as the Saracens. So we have Franks, Saracens, Byzantines, and Mongols. Some very unusual civs to see on Arabia, if this was a pick civ situation. Of course this is not, this is uh, random civilizations. And in the next game they will switch civilizations. So some very interesting uh, civ matches, matchups here. So we can go through each of them. I don't see either of the players laming, they're just going through their standard builds. And we'll analyze that a little bit uh, later. First we could start with uh, Spade, and he's playing as the Franks. The Franks are best known for their uh, cavalry. They have a very weak early game, a very strong night rush if they can get into it and survive the feudal age that is, and very strong paladins later in the game. Franks are mostly known as a one trick pony but they also have access to the halbs, to, uh, to the halb line, and to gunpowder. So not necessarily a one trick pony but they definitely have a uh, strength, a very strong strength, and uh, not too many other options for them. Spaden's teammate is going to be Lufus, who's playing as the Saracens. Saracens probably one of the weaker civs on Arabia, and uh, some very useless bonuses for them. They also they do get a market bonus, which is very useful, um, whether it's an early game or late game. But we'll have to see the market to come out for that. And they get a small archer bonus with archers attack built bonus versus buildings. They get a full fleshed out archer line. Uh, they get camels and night line with bloodlines, although no cavalier for them. And a very strong unique unit with some very strong siege. So if they make it to later game, uh, should should be a big power in this game. A strong house. But again, both the Saracens and the Franks very weak early on. So they'll be hoping to get to the castle age uh, undisturbed or with minimal damage. Their opponents for this game, Tato is going to be playing as the Byzantines. Uh, Byzantines of course get cheaper trash, camels, uh, skirmishers, and spearmen as well as a cheaper imp uh, upgrade to Imperial Age. Don't get the best scouts in the world, get some good trash of course, um, some very good archers along with their uh, Saracen opponent. Red is just Xing his uh, opponent's town center for his ally. And the Byzantines are quite versatile, their knight line's a little bit weak, but that's okay. And we'll have to see what they go for later in the game, it's hard to predict what they'll do. Uh, I'm expecting archers from him. Error is playing as the Mongols, probably considered the strongest civ in this, uh, of these four civs, and especially on, Ara on Arabia. They get the nice uh, scout line of sight bonus, very quick uptime with their hunt hunting gatherer bonus. Uh, all these civs, by the way, except for the Franks, do get access to camel. And the Mongols, of course, have a really strong unique unit with the Mangadai and some very strong siege. So they'll be considered a late game powerhouse, but also very good early game due to that hunt bonus and the scout rush. So overall, I think they're the most rounded Civ, as far as if you look at ages. So Civ advantage, I think I would give it to uh, Tato and Air, although only slightly. Again, the players will switch Civs for the next game. Spain is luring in a bit of deer for himself. Oh, and we have a really late boar steal at six minutes in the game, and here goes Air with his boar. Spain is right behind, he's in the chase. Here he comes. And he's going to go attempt trying to block the boar. If Ta Eric does get the boar, it's a huge advantage for him, especially playing as Mongols. Mongols are scary enough with two, bo two boar. Imagine them on three boar and spade in on one boar. It's a really big deal. Here comes Lufus to help out his ally spade in and, st and take their boar back. The two of them can really block this boar quite a bit and uh, do quite a bit of damage to Error's scout. Looks like Lufus is going to try to block the boar. I think they should be communicating a little bit more, but it looks like they'll get the boar, actually. 
the air the villager from air was attempting to go out for the board but he's going to go back and this is going to be a big loss for air he's going to lose most of the hp on his scout and not get much for it it's going to delay spade in a little bit so that's a bit of a consolation let's take a quick look at the map see what the players are going for at the stage of the game air i bet you will be going for a scout rush he's up quite early it's the normal thing for the oh the spore is still here Filler just going to go out, and it looks like the boar's gone back. The scout can't lure it back. Anyway, Arrow will be going for a scout rush. He's going to build his buildings out this way, I bet. He has an exposed gold to archers. However, I don't expect the Franks to go heavily into archers. Uh, of course, expect them to go into knights. So I think his gold should be safe as long as he walls it. This wall will be quite a bit of investment. And as long as Arrow protects his gold, I think he should be in okay position. Uh, his wood looks like it has quite a bit of wood on it. Can take wood at the front, of course. His map is uh, his map gets a passing grade. His ally Tato, gold is very exposed, and it's going to be very impossible to wall this up. Expecting the Saracens to go for uh, some archers, so Tato could have a tough time defending his resources. It looks like Tato is going to go for a straight archer rush, if uh, or per perhaps uh, skirmishers. We'll have to see. their opponents this game. Spaden is heavily walling as you expect the Franks player to do. Here's Tato. He's going to block the villager and he's going to get a villager kill. Wow. It's quite late in the game, Spaden, to be getting a loom at this stage. Especially if you're taking four deer. You should have it at this point. And because of that, he's going to lose another villager. He's already been delayed with his boar. As you can see, Spaden is the only player not to click up to the next stage. Is he? Yeah, he's the only player not to click up, perhaps because uh, he's been delayed this boar. He's gone with three militia, and if uh, if I were to predict what he's doing, I would say he's going for a fast castle build. Has a safe gold, will have plenty of food, although he can't click up right now. And hopefully, he'll be able to go into knights. Error is going into scouts, and if he's going to a Spaden's base, he shouldn't find that much, um, much damage shouldn't be able to do that much damage if we see a little bit of walling from Spaden on the top side. With the scouts, he'll try to first defend from these militias from Spaden. And just to round things out, take a quick look at Luthus. He's up to the Feudal Age quite quickly. He's going to be going for, uh, looks like an Archer Rush. I can't exactly tell at the moment. Some sort of Feudal Rush, of course. This is a very nice hill for Spaden. Hopefully you can keep harassing the Berries villagers. Or these uh, deer hunting villagers. And let's see if uh, Spaden can take a scout, possibly. He's already taken a scout, first one. That's a, good, uh, that's a good win for him. If he can take a second one, he'll definitely make his uh, drush worth it. Let's see the micro. Scout's getting very low and he's going to micro quite back. Oh, but he's going to re-engage and... Poor micro from error. He's going to lose uh, two scouts when he could have only lost one, maybe even none. So two scouts down from error. Error's going to seed up quite a bit of farms and I would expect him to go for a castle off the back of this. Here's the two archer ranges from Lufus. Is Lufus taking gold? He's not taking... No, he's taking gold in the left side. A little bit surprising. He could have walled off through here. And uh, as you can see, only four villagers are able to take this gold efficiently. The rest will be inefficient. So I don't know what, about that call. Tato is going for skirmishers. 25% cheaper for the Byzantines, of course. And why not? Lufus is going for archers. So that makes sense. Spain is up to the few late. He's making those walls, as I said. His drush is bottom enough time to get the, the better walls up. And even place the lumber camp in this position. I'm going to quickly check over to Spaden's point of view. Spaden has... Uh, he's a little bit short of resources, but he'll get up. And he'll be into the castle age just like the Franks like. And this is really the best you could ask for, considering he was behind uh, one boar for quite a bit. Looks fully walled. Uh, this villager's trapped, but oh well. We'll have the farming upgrade on the farms as well. Anyway, here comes the skirmishers from Tato. They'll be able to make very short work of these uh, Saracen's archers from Lufus. And in fact, Lufus doesn't even have that many. He didn't make any skirmishers of his own. 
And he's, it signals to me he's a little bit behind in production. <laughs> oh no, the wolf is going to get a kill on the skirmisher. No, it's not. Ah, oh, I'm disappointed. Fletching for Lufus. Tato doesn't quite have it yet, although you're never going to want to fight archers versus skirmishers. Some quick walls for Lufus should really uh, help to protect his economy from these skirmishers. They can do quite a bit of damage, not by killing villagers, but by uh, idling villagers. Here's the fletching for Tato, and Spaden is going to be halfway up to the cat. Well, he just clicked up now. He's going to be up first. I bet you, though, that Air is not going to be very far behind. Air is taking stone. He's going to stonewall in through here, help protect from the early night raids. And these are some pretty big walls, I might say. He's going to have to wall here, too. Here comes the scouts from Air. This is one of the benefits of playing a 2v2. If your opponent directly across from you walls up, you're able to go, of course, to, uh, to your other opponent. Lufus, which is uh, not walled up, obviously. Who has the chess set? I have no idea what that means. So Lufus is going to pay the price not for walling. He could have easily walled through here and through here. And I know that players don't like to wall, but uh, if you want to win games, it's absolutely essential. Lufus is going to get this tower up. It's essential this tower goes up on time, or else he can lose a lot of villages, even lose the tower. Here comes Lufus from the back. He's going to lose a few archers straight away, though, to these skirmishers. And you really see the strength of the Byzantines uh, and the Mongols in this situation. The skirmishers and uh, cavalry mix. Lufus is going to lose a ton here. He's lost two villagers already. He's lost a third villager. He's lost a fourth villager. Should see a fifth villager. Sixth villager. Oh my gosh. And a seventh villager down for Lufus. Lufus is left on 25 vils. And without gold, might not even have enough stone for, for a uh, tower if he deletes this. And this is one of the downsides, of course, of going for a fast castle if you're Spaden. Spaden's going to go to a second town center. Get some more villagers for his team. Of course, uh, Lufus is down. And with these scouts take... Oh my gosh, are they going to take down the watchtower? Yeah, they are. And that's going to be no stone for Lufus. That's a big mistake. Yeah, no stone left for Lufus. That means he can't place down another tower now. And look at his economy. It's absolutely horrid. Villagers aren't even taking food from the farms. That's how bad it is. What he needs right now is just a ton of knights from Spaden. And knights would be a perfect, um, a perfect uh, unit to counter this army composition. I would estimate maybe three knights would be enough to clean this up. And of course, these are Frankish knights. They already have essentially bloodlines at this stage. Meanwhile, it's uh, smooth sailing for uh, Error and Tato. They have fully stonewalled up. They're working on the full stonewall anyway. A team stonewall. And their economies are working smoothly. Spaden's perfectly fine. He's going to have the best economy out of all these players. But it's really Lufus that's suffering. And here comes the Knights of Spaden. They'll be able to clean up the skirmishers. Lufus needs to get his economy working really quickly. He's got tons of wood. He needs to seed it into farms and click up to the next age. If I was Lufus, I would even uh, start to wall up a little heavier now. You've got 75 stone left. You can pour that into walls. Or you could just make palisades. But you need something. And as you can see, Lufus can't even afford army to defend himself. He's relying heavily on Spaden. Yet another villager down for Lufus. Lufus is down to 24 villagers. Same number he was after that uh, first big raid. So he hasn't gone anywhere. Air is going to be the second up to the castle age. Air is going to go for what looks to be a camel defense and add some town centers in. Try to get to the Mongols late game, where he should have the advantage. And if you're uh, either Tato or Air, probably not fearing the Frankish Knights too much. 
because both your sieves do get camels. Mongols get, of course, uh, well, they get camels. Byzantines get the better camels. And knights, of course, and uh, Franks, of course, do not get camels. All right, Lufus has done stage one. He's mining gold heavily. Well, he's mining gold and seeing quite a few farms. If you want to compare development of him and uh, Error, Error had this amount of farms maybe five, ten minutes ago. And Lufus is, is only at that stage right now. Probably the same number of villagers Error was on ten minutes ago, too. However, Spaden is on 53 vills, and that's about, uh, that would be about 10 more than Tato at this stage. Here's the second town center from Error. He's already on stone, so he'll eventually have a castle. Let's check Error's resources. Yeah, he's floating a little bit too much food. Doesn't have a market to sell it off. So that's going to delay his boom a bit. Eco management is so important in Age of Empires. And it's it's something whether you're a low level player, or intermediate player, such as myself, or even an expert player that always can be used work on. Spaden is going with the second monastery. Uh, monks, of course, are a legitimate option. Only one of these players has... Well, my bad. Only the top players have gone for archers. And these walls really helped uh, Tato and Eris' team. Tato's going to be the second up to the next stage. He is on three archer ranges. He'll have plenty of army. He has plenty of army, in fact. Plenty of spearmen as well. And Tato, Tato's army is absolutely just massive at this point. Lufus has palisaded up, but uh, these palisade walls are not going to last very long. And I have the feeling that Lufus is going to be a lot more trouble. Wow, these walls are not even going to go up. And, <laughs> what is that? Seven scouts with bloodlines for error? Granted, a lot of them are on low, ch low HP, but man. It's not your day, Lufus. And just like that, I bet you Lufus, he's going to lose another two villagers. This one, he's going to make a run for it. Is he going to get away? He's going to get away, okay. So Spaden is forced to react to this. He's going to go back. And these spearmen from Tato are quite scary to the Frankish knights. So it doesn't cost Tato that much to build. If you're looking how this game is shaping out, Spaden is quite strong. He's got a really good economy. He's 67 bills. And this is actually going to be Spaden versus Tato. Tato is only on 50 bills. He has some defenses up already, though, in case uh, Spaden wants to get aggressive. So Spaden's going to be the strongest player. It looks like he's heavily invested into plus two knights. And it's hard to say if this is the correct decision. Uh, of course, he's going to need quite a bit of army to support his ally, considering Tato has so much army. And it's good, great for defensive purposes, but uh, I don't know how much damage he'll be able to do with Tato, with Pikemen, I'm, I'm sure is going to come in. Or with Error fully stonewalled. And if Spaden doesn't do the damage with this push, of course you're not going to want to face a Mongols and Imperial Age. Not only do they have Elite Mangadai, they also have access to Heavy Camel, which the Franks fear. And then Tato, he won't be very far behind. And of course, you're not going to have to face camels or us uh, or spearmen from the Franks. Goes into that Franks predictability we talked about earlier. And Tattoo's even going up to the next age. He's been in the feudal age so long and had uh, such a undisturbed economy that he can afford it. Of course, the Byzantines do get a cheaper imperial age as well. I'm going to keep an eye on uh, Tattoo's resources, and it's not like he's done this without army either. He's got plenty of army. Cartography. Would like to see the pikeman upgrade, but uh, hard to afford with all these things he's getting. So Tato's going to be on minimal economy for a while. He's going up to the second town center, but as you can see, he's not in any hurry to build it. 
He's going to be able to get Arbalest and Bracer straight away. I assume that's what it's for. Oh my god, that's a lot of knights and Spaden, though. If Spaden can catch out these uh, these crossbows before they upgrade to Arbalest, it's going to be a huge waste for Tattoo to go up to the Imperial Age and severely delay him. Let's see if they get him. Franks, again, they do get two, plus two line of sight on their knights as well. And... Let's see Spaden's point of view. He's going to get distracted by the scout. No, he's not. He's going to go. And he should see the knights. I mean, sorry, the crossbows. Okay, he sees three of them. The rest are going to get away. This is a smart move from Tato. This must have been intentional. He's div uh, diverted three of the archers over to the right side to save the rest. And Tato will get away. Let's see where he goes. If these crossbow do upgrade to Arbalest, they should be able to shred through knights. Two Mignonels out from Spaden. He's going to try to do the damage on air before he uh, gets his castles out. He's got his first castle on the top side. Second castle in this area would do him quite a bit of good. And I'm sure he's at least halfway to that castle. Air has gone out with a few knights of his own. And Spader really doesn't have much to defend this. He's got four monks out. But this is uh, the use of having the scouts um, still out. He's going to be able to take out two, all of the monks with just two scouts. And there's the Arbalus upgrade from Tato. Spaden, he was the strongest player on his team. He's now in quite a bit of trouble. I'm sure Lufus won't be able to help it out, him out anytime soon. He just reached the Imperial Age, uh, the Castle Age. Alright, let's see how Arbalest bunched up do against Frankish Knights. <laughs> the answer is not too good. It's just too much attack power. Uh, could use ballistics though. That's a big, that's a big one. And bear in mind, these arbalists don't even have chemistry yet. <laughs> oh, that's not a good sign. Yeah, it can just basically one-shot knights. And this is with all the armor too. There's GG. Tato is absolutely uh, a powerhouse. Air will get his castles out, should be able to defend. He's already defended from the push of Spaden. And Lufus is just too far behind in this game. Not walling up. Uh, Tato made a good choice by going into skirmishes early. And then Air made a good choice by supporting his ally. Starting to hit Lufus nice and early on with his scouts. Uh, just Lufus can't defend himself. And good play from uh, Air and Tato this game. If you're on YouTube, I'll see you next time. Or, let's take a look at the achievements first before I see you next one. No eco imp. It's the Byzantine imp. Best KD ratio from Tattoo. Uh, although I think that, um, I don't know, they both had very good teamwork. Um, Tattoo and Error. Best economy goes to Spade in, in all three categories, but it doesn't make much of a difference. Let's see. Spaden was up 18 minutes. Error wasn't that far behind. With all those farms he seeded. And best economy in the end went to Error. With uh, villager numbers. Here you can see, uh, look at this. Lufus, uh, Lufus is the collapse. Right at this very moment. If you're on YouTube, I'll see you next time. Or in game two, I suppose. Alright, let's switch it up. Let's go to game two. They will be flipping the civilizations. So if you thought this game was a Civ win, because the Mongols are absolutely so strong, and uh, the Byzantines are strong as well, we'll just have to test that theory. I will be back in one second. The score is now 1-0. One, oh. one for uh, Tato and Air, and we'll have game two in a minute.
Alright, and I'm back. <laughs> Again, let me know how the mic quality is. I tested it out earlier, it seemed quite fine. Might want to adjust the noise gate though. And let's jump into game two now. Game two will switch this from, that, um, from last time. <laughs> A little louder, maybe. <laughs> All righty, let's get this. <laughs> let's get this game started. Hello everybody and welcome. I am going to be casting with you guys today the second game of the uh, Masters of Arabia matchup between Lufus and Spaden versus Tato and Air. The score right now is 1-0 and they have switched sieves from the last game. So let's start in the bottom right corner. We have Tato playing as the Franks. His ally for this game is going to be Air playing as the Saracens. So Franks and Saracens. And oh boy, Spade is going out. He's gonna lure. He's gonna try to steal some. Uh, he's gonna steal some sheep right away. He's got the Mongol Scout too. And there's the boar. There's the lovely boar. Nope, not interested in the boar. He's interested in going straight to the town center. Wow. <laughs> no, no, no. He, okay, he's gonna go back for the boar. What a surprise. All right. Let's see if he takes the boar. There he goes. Two hits. And man, this has got to be the easiest, uh, easiest sheep and boar steal I've ever seen. <laughs> that is if he gets it. Four sheep right away, and of course Mongols getting their fa uh, better. Um, can't think right now. Getting their faster, um, faster gather rate bonus on the hunt. This will be a big advantage for Spaden. So Spaden is playing on the bottom left, and he's going to be up three boars playing as the Mongols probably considered the best civ out of these uh, three civilizations on Arabia. Spaden's ally this game will be Lufus playing as the Byzantines. Hopefully Lufus will have a better game from the last game. Uh, he struggled mightily last game. Uh, I don't exactly blame him for that. Some very good play from uh, from Spaden from uh, Error and Tato. And the map certainly didn't do him any favors as well. As well as the strategy from uh, from his ally Spaden. But anyway, that was the last game. Let's talk about this game. I've already dis uh, discussed the Civ matchups for this uh, for this game. Of course, Mongols I think are the strongest Civ. Saracens they're good for archers and camels. Franks are good for uh, just good for their knights. Mongols have a monster a late game, but also a really good uh, scout rush early game. And then the Byzantines are pretty versatile with some very good trash, as well as the quick imp which we saw last game. So with that said, let's look at their maps. Spain, he's gone with three villagers on wood, perhaps thinking about a scout rush. He's going to have, uh, he should have three boars. That is if Tatu doesn't steal his boar. He's got some very nasty gold. It's very hard to get a mining camp on it. Where do you put the mining camp? You put it here, you put it here. You've got to put it here, and it's going to be a bad lumber, uh, bad mining camp as well. We're getting to that stage in the stream where I trip over all my words again. Anyway, at least Spaden has some really good wood. He has some safe berries. The gold is going to be the biggest concern for him. I can imagine him walling through here. And man, this gold is going to be tough to defend. Meanwhile, Lufus, his ally, has some gold in the wood in the back. The nice thing about this, though, is that he's going to be able to uh, defend both these areas simultaneously. Although you can say that's a negative also, in case he loses both areas. Looks like Lufus hasn't found his sheep quite yet. Meanwhile, map for Tato. <laughs> He's gone forward with some deer. That's a that's a ballsy play considering you're down one, uh, one boar. But you have to adapt, I suppose. And there's quite a bit of deer here. There's three, uh, six, seven deer here. So two deer patches right in the same area. 
These players are going to fight for sheep, and uh, air is going to be lame and kill both of the sheep. <laughs> Serves him right, I suppose, for uh, spade and stealing the boar. So with these extra deer, I think uh, Tato should have enough food to do whatever strategy he was originally intending upon. Hopefully he will. I think he's going to have a hard time, though, defending from the scout rush of Spaden. And looking at Tato's map, his gold is quite exposed. It's going to be impossible to wall this. And his wood line is quite exposed as long as he doesn't wall through here, which, uh, which would probably be beneficial for him. Let's see, Air's Wood, not a great wood, not a great gold either. All of these maps uh, for this game, it looks uh, highly exposed. And that should pr promote both a short game and an aggressive game. Luffy is going to lure some deer to compensate for the fact that he lost some sheep. And Tattoo is actually going for a Drush. Which is going to cost him even more food. Remember, he didn't have that much food to start with because of losing the, the boar. You know, ideally, Tato, he wants to go for uh, what the Franks player did last game. Go for the fast castle into knights. It's a big difference between this game and last game, though. And that's probably... It's not only the boar, it's also going to be the maps. Tato's map is absolutely not wallable at all. And as soon as scouts get on this map, uh, Tato's going to suffer gravely. So he's going to move out with three militia. Barely has enough food for the third one. And at the same time, Spaden is already up to the next age. He'll be able to defend from the Drush and even go aggressive with scouts. Let's see, Spaden has upped on 18 population. Very, very low. Very risky. Let's see if it pays off. Although perhaps uh, perhaps not that risky because, again, Spaden stole the boar. So I think you could pull it off on this uh, low number. The concern, of course, when you go up on 18 population with Mongols is can you keep scouts coming out? And I'm sure Spaden will be able to do that with, uh, with the extra boar. Air and Lufus on the top side have clicked up to the next age. Here comes the Drush from uh, Tato. It's not going to be able to do too, too much, though. And in fact, Tato is even getting too close to the town center. It's going to take a few volleys from the militia. And as well, Lufus is getting pretty close to losing his scout. The scout from Air is going to chase it away. Air is going to go for uh, some straight archer ranges into archers or an archer skirmisher mix. Lufus looks like he's going to go straight into skirmishers as the Byzantines get that uh, discount. And already three scouts out from Spaden. It's very early to have three scouts out at 10 minutes. 10 minutes 45. Wow, Tato, he's put in a lot of work since I last came to him. And my god, I thought I thought he wasn't going to be able to finish off this wall. Still hasn't finished it though. These villagers better work quickly before the scouts come in. And it's taking Tato quite a bit of resources, not only for the Palisade, but he's also using three, four, five villagers to do this. So he's had five vills idle for the last few minutes. But with these walls, I think that Tato should be able to achieve his desired strategy, which will be a fast castle into knights. Here comes Air. He's actually got four militias. A little unusual to see. He's upgrading to men at arms. How much damage can these men at arms do? Well, if they get into the back of the base of Lufus, which he's working on walling right now, if they get into the back, they will be able to do significant damage, especially with Lufus not even taking gold yet. Tato is able to get a. Uh... No, he's not gotten anything. He's just lost. He's able to get a scout from uh, from Spaden, but definitely not worth it with his militia. I suppose you can argue they bought him enough time to build his walls, though. Anyway, here comes the men-at-arms, and the walls clearly aren't up from Lufus. Four men-at-arms coming in. And they'll be able to do a ton of damage. 
If Lufus wants, he'll be able to make one archer to defend from this. Here comes the men-at-arms. Air is going to lose the scout a little early. Men-at-arms are downhill at the moment. They're going to take a villager. Yeah, she's going to go down. They're going to work on this guy. He's going to get away, actually, though. And not the best micro from uh, from Air. He's going to take this archer, though. He's taken one villager and an archer so far. And again, he's going to back away from the weak villager. That's the second time he's done that. Both these villages are pretty weak. Back in the back in Air's base, he's got his scouts moving around, but Air already has two spearmen to defend. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's that's not good. That was a big missed opportunity from Air, only taking one villager. He could have clearly gotten at least three villagers, maybe with some great micro, four villagers. But no, he only walks away with one villager and an archer, maybe a skirmisher. So missed opportunity from Air. Nice tower from Spaden. It takes Tato off one of his wood lines. Um, of course, Tato's going for the fast castle. His resources are very delicate at this point. So a tower can do significant damage. It's, uh, let's see. Stable, blacksmith. It's not going to delay Tato to the next age, though, which was Spaden's ultimate goal. Let's check Spaden's resources. He's actually mining stone. So he'll be able to get another tower up in this position. He has the uh, scouts out to uh, defend the tower position. And Tato still has a counter tower with the starting stone he has. Alright, Spaden's going to go with this tower in the wood line. This, uh, this is a misplay, actually, going with this tower. Perhaps an outpost would have been better. Wait till uh, Spaden got a few, uh, few hits on the tower before make making your own tower. Basically, this tower is going to do almost nothing. And just like that, Tattoo's going to be very low on wood. He's got enough farms for the moment and to, uh, to, get, um, to get scouts out from one stable. But Tattoo's not going to be able to afford a second stable anytime soon. And he's going to be hurting for quite a bit of wood. Wood, of course, I think is the most valuable resource in this game. <laughs> oh my god, Air has gone full men at arms. I love this play. I love men at arms. One of my favorite units. Men at arms. As uh, William Wallace calls it in the campaigns. Not very useful though in this situation. Would have been much more useful if they could have kept this hole open and kept streaming men at arms through, killing more and more villagers, limiting Lufus' access to gold. But that didn't happen. And in fact, that strategy works better when the gold is forward also. So I don't think it's going to be very worth it. These skirmishers have the extra one attack on them, so they'll be able to do two damage versus men at arms. And as you can see, men at arms not very effective, especially without the armor upgrade. These were Celts, men at arms with plus one armor might be a different story, but of course they're not. They're Saracens. This is an absolutely devastating tower from Spaden. Spaden does have gold on the bottom side, but again, it's going to be uh, more villager idle time, and it's going to be 100 extra wood, which Tato's hurting a lot for wood. So these towers definitely worth it from Spaden. What's up, DJ Sapson? Spaden's gonna be the second up to the next age. He's a uh, he's got a quite quite a good looking gate base, if I may say so myself. He's pretty secure. I don't know why he hasn't put the effort into wall this in. We talked about that poor gold position. He's only able to mine gold with three villagers right now, at max five villagers. And uh, he's going to have to put more villagers on gold if he wants to sustain off of two stables. Oh, another great tower from Spain. They just keep coming. 
And Error hasn't been able to get out enough knights to defend himself. Uh, this is kind of why you see the snowball situation. You start losing access to resource, you can't build enough army to uh, regain the access. And let's take a look at Tato's resources. He's got to be hurting quite a bit. He's got quite a bit of wood in the bank. Has a little bit of food. He's not taking any gold. And we'll only be able to make one more knight. As well, with this tower, it means that the scouts are going to be able to get into his base. He's going to have to have a knight to defend. <laughs> Man, look at this town center from Tato. That's atrocious. So Tato's trying to defend his ally. And it's a good thing these knights were here from Tato because that would have been a lot of villagers lost for air. As well, air doesn't have a really good other wood line. Lufus will be third up to the next age. Oh, I think this knight needs to come back and defend. Oh, but there's some spearmen here from Spaden too. It makes it quite hard. Anyway, Tat uh, Tato has his town center now up on his gold, helps secure his wood. All the players are up to the castle age now. Scores, it's 2100 for Spaden and Lufus, and just about 2000 for Tato and Air. So slight lead for Spaden and Lufus. Yet another tower, it'll take away three more farms from Tato. Here comes Spaden, he's got plus one armor done on these knights. They're not going to want to sit into the town center too much, but they'll be able to get quite a few villager kills. Oh, and here comes the sandwich. Scouts coming in at the back. A lot of these villagers are very low. And two more villagers down. That could be a third villager. Uh, she's going to get away. Okay, third villager down. So three more down from Tato. Tato's only at 43 vills. Tato's gonna rewall, and the longer he keeps Tato off of uh, off of gold, the less Tato will be able to defend himself with knights of his own. Bum rush of the tower. And crossbow for Lufus. What kind of army does Lufus have? Uh, not a very strong army, if I may say so. But that's okay, because Spaden's doing all the heavy lifting in this game. And in fact, Spaden, a little bit of misplay, he's gotten his three villages trapped. So finally, Spaden, he's going to lose his three villagers. Forward Town Center for Spaden. This would be a great position for a um, Forward Siege Workshop from either of the players. They're so close together. There's a hill here as well. It looks like the two villagers from Spaden will get away. <laughs> so what Tato needs, he needs a few lucky conversions. He needs to mine enough gold and, and take enough food in order to get his knight numbers up. Lufus is click up to the Imperial Age. He's playing as the Byzantines, so for the second game in a, in a row, we've seen the Byzantines go for a fastish imp. With very little economy for him. If he is man if he manages to maintain his army, he'll be able to get crossbow and uh, he'll be able to get arbalist and um, what you would call it and bracer, and that'll give him a very strong early imp army. Here comes Spaden for another night raid. Should be able to get another villager, second villager, and Tato stuck at forty-eight vills. And basically no army. Two more villagers down, third villager down. What? These villagers... <laughs> it's like they don't even have loom with that downhill. As well as the plus one attack. <laughs> if you didn't know already, the plus one attack means it takes one less strike from a knight to, uh, 
to kill a villager, so it's actually very important for raiding. Tato's now up to three town centers. He's pouring basically all of his resources into maintaining his town centers. Let's see what Lufus can do for now. The longer Air keeps uh, Lufus uh, distracted, the more time Air and uh, Tato have to get up to the next stage. Oh, that's a big hit. See if we can see a big second big hit. Oh, another big hit. Wow. And <laughs> a third big hit. Wow. So that's all the army down from Lufus. What is he going to be able to upgrade now that he's in the next age? Big misplay from him. And bad timing as well. Here comes the knights from uh, Spaden. Just a little bit too late. That's got to be the worst timing I've seen. Luffy's going to go with another archer range. He wants to get out those uh, those arbalests that he's supposed to have. Could have had 20 at this point if he hadn't lost his army. And uh, every second that Lufus is not doing damage with those arbalests is uh, every second that uh, Tato and Error have a stronger chance of winning this game. Hand <laughs> cannon's OP. All right, looks like Spader was going to go for a castle on the hill. Uh, Tato has barely enough army to defend. Monks are such an important unit when you're in, uh, <laughs> when the monk's mobility doesn't matter so much. Here comes the castle, ballsy castle from Spaden. He thinks he's got enough army. There are four monks here, though, from Tato. And here comes the castle from Tato. So that's going to be a little bit of a waste from stone from Spaden. There's not that much HP left on this. Tato's going to win this fight for now. And because of that, should be able to secure the hill. Alright, there's Bracer and Arbalest for Lufus. Lufus is on basically very little economy. And he needs to do the damage soon. Looks like Tato is back in this game. He's doing quite well. In fact, even higher score than Spaden. I'm not sure uh, Spaden hasn't made enough military thus far. Could be due to a uh, lack of gold saturation. Uh, although maybe not. But uh, either way, Spaden looks like he's in a lot of trouble. And I was expecting this to go the other way in Spaden's favor. Another great archer raid from Air. He's going to pick take off uh, even more villagers of Lufus. Who's trying to get his economy in working order with the three town centers. It's not going to happen though. Meanwhile, Lufus is uh, Arbalest just standing in the middle of the middle of the middle of the base middle of the map doing nothing <laughs> my god I don't know how that Arbalest survived all those volleys all right here goes Lufus he's gonna go for his first raid what will he see can pick off some uh, wood villagers and some farmers Oh, this is an excellent castle from Spaden, though, right on top of the hill. It should be an imp race. See who gets the imp first. Uh, it's very delicate, though. If you go to imp too fast, you risk being overwhelmed. This is where the camel advantage really helps. It's a really great defense from the Mongols player. And if Spaden gets a treb out early, we'll have a downhill treb against Tato's, uh, Tato's castle. Here's the second castle coming in from Tato. It's going to be in defensive position. Help defend two golds and this town center. Remember Frank's cheaper castles. I assume Tato doesn't think he has enough army to place it in this location. Because that would be a good castle position as well. 
Arbalest with uh, with Bracer don't do you a lot of good when they can't hit their targets. <laughs> I'm pointing out the obvious today. Here's the Imperial Age from Air. Difference is Air is going to go up with a much better economy than Lufus went up on. Lufus is on 45 bills. And Tato's going to take a, uh, I don't know if you can say it is a bad fight, but he's going to lose a lot of knights. Oh, Mike is really loud. Okay. Well, I can move that away then. Is this free-for-all? No, this is a 2v2, as you can see by the stream title. I don't want to be a smartass. Anyway, uh, Lufus is going to lose all of his army. Here comes the better arms we saw from earlier in the game. They're going to do some good. I'm so glad. Oh, is there going to be one better arms left, though? I'm so glad for this guy. He was able to do something useful. A few Mega die out from Spade, and they're not elite, so they're not that deadly. Not quite yet. And yes, this was Random Sibs. They have switched from Game 1. I just casted Game 1. You can check it on YouTube or the video upload. On Twitch. So there's Imperial Age from Air. He sustained, he sustained z basically zero damage and has inflicted damage. All while Lufus has been in the Imperial Age for about 10 minutes longer. Let's see what these uh, non-upgraded Mangadai can do. And there's the Imperial Age from Tato as well. He's going to go up before Spaden is going to go up. And one way to neutralize the Mongols is take out their castles before they hit Imp. I think so far, uh, Air has played a perfect game. He's done some really good raiding, taken some really good fights, cleared up the army of Lufus uh, on multiple occasions. Spaden's had a good game as well, but uh, start with the towers, but starting to decline in Castle Age. And starting to lose against Tato. He's going to go with two rams and some Mangadai. And Spaden's up to the next age as well. He'll be about a minute or two behind Tato. And my god, that's a lot of monks. Let's see if they get conversions. As well, it looks like these uh, Mangadai are missing ballistics. Oh, here comes the Mangadai. Mangadai. Here comes the conversion. Let's see how many he gets. It's one Mangadai, two Mangadai, three Mangadai. And four Mangadai. So, good trade from Tato. <laughs> Once again, the army from Luffy is not really doing any damage. This is Imperial Age from Tattoo. He's going to go with Trebs straight away. No Trebs from this castle, though. It's good to use both your castles. Oh, and here comes a forward castle from Tattoo. <laughs> and if these were elite Mangadai, these villagers would be dead. But the castle is up. And Tato's doing a good job. He's trying to cut um, cut Spaden off of stone, which is what you have to do against Mongols. As well as uh, trying to win the Treb battle. It's going to be hard, though, going uphill. Meanwhile, Air is doing a ton of damage to Lufus. Air clearly has more army. And Lufus has no access to wood or gold at this point, I think. What is is it a two gold mine? I've never seen that before in Arabia. And it's looking really bad for Spaden and Lufus. Spaden is losing his castles. He's lost access to stone. And without his castles, he'll have nothing to defend himself with. He hasn't invested into camels that heavily. 
There's already Cavalier up from Tato. Camels don't do that well against Cavalier. Especially Frankish Cavalier. Armor's already done. Lufus is basically GG at this point. Doesn't have army, doesn't have resources to make army. And there's the official GG. Very good game for the spade, and if I were to pick a winner at, uh, you know, at maybe, um, maybe 20 minutes in this game, I would have said, uh, Spaden and Lufus because of that great tower rush from Spaden, taking Tato off of so many resources, really hurting Tato. But, uh, a lot of bad trades from Lufus, not doing any damage with his early imp, and, uh, hurting his economy in the meantime. Hurting his economy by going up so fast, and also the raids from Air. And then Spaden um, slowly declining as soon as uh, Tato was able to stabilize. And eventually Tato taking out the castles of Spaden, rendering him defenseless. And uh, of course, Lufus can't defend himself either in his own base. Let's take a look at the achievements. Nope. Yes. Yes, here we go. Best KD ratio from error this game. I thought he did it up. He had an excellent game this game. Really good economy from Spaden, uh, although it didn't uh, it didn't amount to that much. And here's your timeline. You can see as soon as uh, Lufus hits the Imperial Age, right before this is where this uh, this spike this uh, drop right here is right when he lost his army, and just downhill from him. Less and less. So if you're on YouTube, I'll uh, see you in the next game, Game 3. And I'm going to take a minute, and then we can start the next game. This will be Game 3. This is a best of five. First of three wins takes the series. Moves on to winner's bracket round two. I think the loser goes on to the loser's bracket, which would, uh, which would make sense. I would say that, uh, <laughs> I don't think any unit is good against Elite Nangodai. Uh, Frankish Paladins will be better than any other Civs Paladins. Maybe Persians, but, uh, I wouldn't want any Civ to go against, uh, against Mongols. And as well, the Mongols can add Camel as well. However, if the Franks do team up with another Civ that maybe gets Siege Onager, or uh, has Elite Manga die themselves, then uh, will be a good combination. So let's start the last game. This last game will be an All Huns War, something I've never seen before. And after these wrecks, I will check what games are on um, on Voobly. I do plan on uh, I have uh, some people uh, scheduled for my weekly co my weekly coaching. And after that, we can do community games if anyone is interested. So uh, that's a little bit up in the air, but definitely something going to be going on. So let's start this game. We have the game three, the All Huns War. Scores 2-0. First to three wins will take. Uh, we'll go into the next round. Hello, everybody. Welcome to game three in this in this uh, Masters of Arabia round one matchup. First to three wins will take the series. Over in the top side, we have Tato playing as the Huns. His ally for this game, all the way on the other side of the map, is going to be Air, playing as the Huns. Every player in this game is playing as the Huns. How often do you see that? 
This is either your uh, this is either uh, really awesome settings because you love the Huns, or these are probably the worst settings in the world because you hate the Huns. On the bottom side, we're gonna have Spaden playing as the Huns, and his teammate is gonna be Lufus playing as the Huns. At least uh, one thing I can say is that I've never seen an all Huns war. So we'll have to see what they go for cavalry archers, uh, knights. We all know the Huns uh, hunt so well on Arabia. So a little bit odd about this map. Uh, Tato and uh, Air are actually quite far away. It's going to make it hard for them to uh, support each other and um, you know help defend against raids and that kind of stuff. It's definitely an advantage for Spade and, and Lufus. But that said, let's take a little bit of a deeper look into their maps. Lufus has a nasty forward gold. He's even got a forward side gold. Where's his other gold? His third gold. His third gold is... Uh, where is it? His third gold is nowhere to be seen. Okay, his third gold is... Wow, Jesus. That, yeah, wow. Okay, Lufus. Lufus is out of luck on his gold. Forget, what I, forget about what I said earlier. His wood is pretty bad, too. Jesus. And this is a Huns War, so this is going to be unforgiving for Lufus. Very bad map. Terrible map. Hopefully he finds a sheep that... Why are Lufus's resources just so far away? He's not even going to find a sheep. Man, Lufus hasn't had any luck this series. Lufus's opponent directly across from him, Tato. He's going to have a very lovely cliff. He's going to have four, de four deer if he wants to lure them in. With the glyph, and I'm sure he's going to wall this. I, there's absolutely no doubt he's going to wall this. He's going to be able to have uh, at least one safe gold, if not two. He's got a nice lumber line. And can even wall this right side super easy and have both stones in it. This is a lovely map from Tato and absolutely the horrid map from Lufus. So map advantage so far for Tato's team. Let's check the bottom side. Spaden has a back wood line. It looks pretty safe. Has a uh, somewhat back uh, gold. Looks pretty safe as well. Can get a mining camp here. Looks, uh, looks pretty decent. Can wall the right side if he wants to send a villager out. Wall. Uh, this is going to be very tough to wall. So the main concern for Spaden is going to be mainly in just in this area. Might want to pseudo wall through here. If that's a thing. But overall Spaden has a passable map. We'll give it a C+. And air. Back wood line. Back gold. A little bit exposed. Where can he wall? Uh, it's basically impossible to wall the forward side. We'll give it a solid C. The good thing for him, though, these, uh, this gold is mostly in the back, so it's going to take a little bit of time for the units to come around it. A lot of missed sheep in this game so far. Two missed sheep from Air. We have the two missed sheep from Lufus. And two missed sheep from Spaden. So those are the maps. Uh, overall, Lufus has absolutely the worst map. And we'll see what what kind of impact that'll have on the game. Uh, hard to say whose maps I would favor overall, because again, Tattoo and Air they are farther apart. Overall, I think I would still take their maps though. Let's see, we saw three on wood from Spain. It could be a scout rush. Three on wood for Lufus could be a scout rush. Three on wood for Tattoo could be a scout rush. And four on wood for Air could be a drush. <laughs> Huns Wars is almost like a game mode in itself, yeah. <laughs> we can take a look at the player's exploration. Tato's moving out right now. Spaden, where's Spaden? Uh oh. Oh, no, his scout's right here. He's gonna lure in some deer. Looks like he just found the sheep. A little extra food for Spaden, that's good. But he's also sacrificing... <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, you guys are going to love this in the chat. This map looks like something. I'm not going to mention. It's unusual too, because he hasn't actually... F he's just found the berries and then he decided to go back. Spaden is going to be first up to the next stage. He's up at 21 pop.
Tato's going to be the second. Up on 22 pop. Rest of the players up on 22 pop. So again, most likely scout rushes from them. You can see 21 or 22 pop up for uh, scout rushes. Sometimes the 22 pop up means you want to be a little more defensive. We'll have to see. And let's, for once more, let's check, uh, check the scouting spade, and he hasn't scouted anything. Lufus hasn't really scouted his opponent either. It's, it's not really that much of a... I mean, I suppose the Huns could forward or go for a drush, but it's, uh, it's pretty meta to go for the scout rush, so they're not missing that much. Oh, oh, oh! Here comes Lufus, he's gonna go into the town center! He's going to get away, though. He's going to lose 3 HP. Not a big deal. Tato's point of view. Uh, okay, he's... He's a little confused where his opponents are. Should see it right now, though. Nope. Here comes those easy walls I was mentioning earlier with Tato. Tato's going to be late on a stable, though. I mean, you've already gone up a 22 pop. And he's only now getting the barracks. So not the cleanest build from him. He's going to be at least a scout or two behind from Lufus. Here's Lufus' stable. Lufus is not even going to bother to start walls on his map. Or maybe maybe he will use these as part of the wall. I can't tell. One of the nice things, though, about going 22 pop-up, you do have a little extra resources than a 21 pop-up are able to get out Spearman nice and early. Good kill from Tato. That uh, definitely takes away from his later uptime. He's even going to stonewall this, and I don't blame him. I mean, these are such easy stonewalls. Not going to cost you that much stone. Going to want to put a gate in there, though. <laughs> and we're going to see an exciting Feudal Age, I'm sure. Tato's going to wall up. He's going to go up to Castle Age in no time. Lufus is on his in progress of walling up. He's going to have to wall up on the bottom side, though. Spade is playing defensive. Air is playing defensive. Air is going to move out now. He's only four scouts, though. He's not going to be able to do anything with that. From woodline to stable. Oh, you mean like this? That is a good question. At the very least, uh, he doesn't have to worry about his stable getting taken out by knights or scouts in the future. That could have been a worry. Perhaps if Lufus made a lot of scouts, could easily take down the stable. And I said Air is not going to do any damage. It just so happens Spade and moves out right as Air comes in. And this villager is going to be close. He's getting a, he's going the wrong way. He wants to die. And he's down. So one villager down from Spade and good raid from Air. That's about the best he can get. Spade is going for an archer range, actually. That's interesting. He's not going to go straight into Knights. He hasn't bothered to uh, make those uh, those easy walls I mentioned earlier. So the archers they'll give him a lot more uh, a lot more uh, army in the feudal age to help defend him defend his gold. Ares invested quite a bit into scouts actually. I would not be surprised at all to see bloodlines from him, and it makes sense uh, with how Spaden has not walled his map. Here comes the villagers from Lufus. If the villagers would like, they can drop a tower in this location. It's not going to do that much damage, though. 
In fact, this will be a big waste of uh, villager time and a very bad decision from Lufus, I think. And this again goes into the decision of making the forward stone walls if two villagers came forward with a bunch of scouts could batter down the stable. Yeah, they're going to drop the tower. That'll do a little damage, but I don't think it'll justify the villagers coming forward. Bloodlines has been done for air. No bloodlines for spade. Okay, spade's doing bloodlines now. Two spears are going to come out. And they're going to be on top of the hill as well, so air is going to go back for now. <laughs> Lufus is going to try to give these villagers as much work as he can, build the state, build the archer range forward. Not an ideal situation though. Tattoo's going to be up to the next age right now. Where is he taking gold? Oh, okay, he hasn't even taken gold. He's going to sell stone, I assume. Alright, let's see what Spading can do with these scouts. <laughs> Apparently nothing. Oh my god, five spearmen from error, but there's no spearmen on this side. There's one spearman, one lonely spearman on the top side. Tanto's going to take another villager from Spade, and Spade is now two villagers behind. Spearman are going to come in the nick of time. And uh, no villagers for air. My bad, for Spade. Spade is going to come into the gold once more. These uh, scouts, they're beefy, they have bloodlines. As well, these are Tanto scouts too. They're going to take down all of the Spearmen. And Spain's gonna lose, uh. He's gonna lose, I think, two villagers now. And he's gonna get kicked off of his own gold, too. This is a big deal for Spaden. Let's check Spaden's resources. Spaden was about to click up to the next age, but he doesn't have enough gold now. He's gonna have to require a market to uh, get up to the next age. What is Tato's plan? Tato is going to go for, uh. It looks to be a boom, maybe a stable. I'm sorry, maybe some knights. And I can't tell if this was the best decision from Air. He's gonna get another villager, but... Uh... You know, on the one hand, you could say, oh, well, these scouts are going to be worthless as soon as Air goes up to the Castle Age. But at the other hand, you know, I think he only got one or two villagers max from that. And now Spaden can safely take his gold. And click up to the next age. Has he built a market? No. He's not even going to have to build that market because he's able to take his gold now. So I don't think that was worth it from Air, although uh, you may debate me. Lufus is going to be second up to the next age. Remember, he went with those, um... Nah, I didn't mention it. He went with, uh, went an archer range and skirmishers. Tato has a tower on his gold. And all the players are up to the castle age now. Score currently is 100 points ahead for Lufus and Spaden. Tato has gone up to three town centers. He's going to have no problem <laughs> defending it all because he's got plenty of stone walls for himself. Four town centers for Tato. He's feeling really safe behind these walls. And heavy plow too. Wow. Very unusual to see four town centers and heavy plow this early on in an Arabia. An Arabia game. We haven't seen that many archers from Spaden. I was expecting to see a lot more. Uh, could have been because Spaden was kicked off of gold so much. Wanted to save up the gold for um, Castle Age. Those scouts came in just the right time.
This is going to be a big pain for uh, Error to, to deal with. Alright, not as big a deal as I thought it was going to be. Spade, uh, Lufus, my bad, is up to the next stage. She hasn't had any problems with this gold. That's one of the, I suppose, downsides of Tato's strategies, allowing Lufus to take his uh, exposed gold very easily. But at the same time, uh, Tato has quite an advantage over uh, Lufus, I might say. What can Lufus do? He can either add a siege workshop, which it looks like he's going to do, try to get through the stone walls. It won't take him that long. Tato's going to hope to have the economy to mass-produce knights by the time the walls are down. Or Lufus can, uh, which he's also doing, he's gonna go to Error's base, and Error has very little defense. He only has, looks to be one spearman, a few cavalry archers, and a tower. So Error's gonna be in a lot of trouble. As well, Spade is coming in with his crossbows. So all the army from Lufus and Spade, you can see it moving across the map, all going to Error's base. Alright, here comes the crossbows. There's enough of them there to deal with maybe uh, seven, eight, nine cavalry archers, I think. And here comes Lufus. Lufus is going to attack on the top. Spain is going to move around, go to join his uh, teammate. See a little bit more coordination from these players, though. And where is Lufus going? He's leaving uh, his allies' crossbows to defend for themselves. Spain's going to get some good kills on the Cavalry Archers, but Lufus should be here to defend his ally. <laughs> nope. Wrong building, Lufus. Okay, here they come, finally. So the pressure on air is it's, it's dialing up to 11. There's going to be a little bit of pressure on Tato. Has Tato's boom paid off? We're going to have to see. Tato's in the Imperial Age. Wow. Okay, so that's a lot of resources that he's uh, spent in that. It looks like Lufus is defending for now, though. This uh, second town center will secure him the gold. Now these forward stone walls make a lot of sense because, um, you know, not only... This Mangano would have been through the stable right about, you know, right about now. But also, now there's a second layer of wall behind this, with a stable going up behind it. So it makes a lot of sense. Uh, perhaps Tato was thinking this uh, in advance. Perhaps he wasn't. I'm not exactly sure. Tato is playing Arena, exactly. <laughs> Tato forgot he's not playing a Spanish and can't use the villagers as army. And there's even a third wall for Tato. It's definitely worth it. The more time you can get. Tato just needs maybe five minutes. Five minutes of uh, no damage. And he'll have enough uh, Cavalier out. Yeah, he just needs time for the Cavalier upgrade, I think. He even has an extra gold in the back. Wow, he's got a perfect map. Error's done a really good job in defending. If Error was dead at this point, uh, you know, Tato's boom would have been for nothing. And, you know, Air Surviving's a great play on his part, but also a little bit of, uh, I feel like, miscommunication between Spaden and Lufus. Siege Workshop is going up to put some pressure on Lufus, uh, sorry, on Air. It's a little late, though. This should have came up a little earlier. 
I don't know how much damage it could do now. Yeah, stable goes down very quickly compared to stone walls. Alright, has Tattoo bought himself enough time? Going up to five stables. We can check his resources. Hurting a bit on gold. Uh, ba -ba -ba. He has a market so he can uh, he can sell resources for gold whenever he wants. Let's see. Let's see the cavalier upgrade come in. There it is. And as well, Tato building the siege workshop in Mangan. I'll just try to hold for a little bit longer. Every minute he buys is crucial. And what a big hit! What a big hit! Cavalier plate burning armor coming in. Once plate burning armor comes in, these cavalry archers not going to stand a chance. Knights, on the other hand, you're going to need numbers to deal with knights. One armor is not necessarily going to make the uh, biggest difference when it goes against uh, going against knights. Spain's on three town centers, Air's on two town centers. Air has the larger army though, and Spain's gonna have a tough time defending from this raid from Air. And Tato's almost ready to engage. He's gonna need a few more cavalier to deal with these knights. Still making it. <laughs> and oh, this is a little bit of poor. <laughs> It's basically impossible to push into Tatano. He's got two Siege Warships. He can make Manganels from both of these. He's gotten the free Manganel kill. Almost going to get a second. This is now what? First, second, third. This is going to be four layers of wall. Luz is going to try on the right side. And what lobby are they playing? These are recorded games. They played in the tournament lobby, I'm sure, earlier. These were played about maybe five hours ago. And I would have casted them live if I was available then. Tanto has a good mass now. We can compare the stats of a knight to a uh, cavalier. 20 HP, 2 attack. With the armor upgrade, it'll be 1 extra armor. Melee armor, 2 extra pierce armor. And Tatsu's going to come in the back, make sure there's no escape for these uh, cavalry archers. <laughs> Might have been better to go through this entrance, because now I think the cavalry archers can escape. I don't think they need to escape, though. Uh, there's quite a few knights from, uh, from Lufus. And I don't think cavalry archers are, um, you know, cavaliers are that much stronger than knights. To make up for this, uh, you know, how much more mass Lufus has. This, uh, this little distraction, though, has bought uh, Tato even more time. He's able to put up yet another Siege Workshop behind this. He's upgrading Paladin as well. And Spain is going to win this fight. He's going to defend on the bottom side. So very close game. Uh, it's only about 200 uh, score difference between the players. <laughs> and Spain and the Siege Workshop is basically useless at this point. Here comes the Cavalier from Tato. He's going to be about maybe 2-3 minutes away from Paladin. And they're going to go for a raid on Spade, and Spade has no way to defend from this. He's got Cavalry Archers, but with uh, with the plate barring armor, it's not going to do too much against Cavalier. Oh, but at the same time, Tattoo is open. Here comes the Knights from Lufus. Tattoo's held for as long as he could hold. He didn't have enough army to defend this. He was hoping to hold out for a little bit longer as he did some damage to Spade. And let's see who does more damage. There's not even any fletching or anything on the town centers. Air is hitting on the bottom side. Look how little damage this huge mass of cavalry archers does to a cavalier. Basically nothing. That's the army from Spaden. There's nothing Spaden can do to defend from this. And he can't have any support from his uh, ally Lufus. At the same time, it looks like... Big Manganel shot. Looks like Spaden and Lufus aren't able to fully, uh... 
fully dominate Tatsu's base. Paladin's now done. Will Paladin be enough to push this back? Big stat difference now between Paladins and Knights. As well as just one more Pierce Armor for these, uh, for these Paladins. And there's GG. Paladin's just gonna be too much. Spaden is dead, and it looks like Tata will be able to defend with Paladin upgrade. So, <laughs> I hate to say great play for Tato because, you know, all he did was, uh, was, uh, boom and wall, but, uh, he was able to get a few good Naganel shots off to defend, get the extra layers of wall, um, had good, good positioning on the walls, of course, we talked about the stone walls out in front. Good defense from air, able to survive in the meantime, even push, uh, push Spaden back. And Lufus coming a little too late with the Meganel not able to get through. Spaden going forward a little bit late, not able to do damage. And Spaden and Lufus not the best teamwork with their early raids on air. So GG, let's take a look at the achievements. <laughs> most units killed and most units lost for Spaden. Let's look at Tato's KD, 45 to 30. Best economy for Tato, of course. What was he on? He was on 130 bills. Palin upgrade. 30 minute imp time. That's crazy. And here's your timeline. Tato just getting stronger and stronger as the boom progressed. And if this game were to go on for another minute or two, you'd see Spaden absolutely disappear from this game. So that's going to be 3-0. It looks like um, Tato and Air are going to move on to the next round, to round 2. Meanwhile, uh, Spade and Lufus, they'll move on to the lo loser's bracket. Well, they'll have to try to get back in this thing, in the Masters of Arabia tournament. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next match if you're on YouTube. Yes, yeah, series goes to Tato and Air. So let me update the score. Score is 3-0. Yeah, Tato and Error, they have some very good teamwork. Um, they were also playing, uh, they were just playing uh, all the time in Absolute Random Cup. They were a team there, so they've had quite a bit of time to uh, gel with each other. Which is an advantage they can have over other teams. Not a lot of teams in the Smashers Arabia tournament also played in the Absolute Random Cup. And there hasn't been a big 2v2 tournament in a while. So they've got that extra time uh, to work with each other. And it's a good advantage for them. I would expect them to go pretty far in this. Farther than you'd expect. <laughs>